two things that I want to want to ask you because age and religion are two things that I think maybe uh, give pause to some people. Right, you're yep. 37 years old, probably you're almost 38. Um, we're young. I'm 36. Yeah. <laughs> we're young. You know, a person would say, what experience does a 30 something year old man have if you're going to be running, the, you know, the entire country and dealing with foreign relations? And then also, that's the first question. Yep. Uh, how is how do you overcome that perspective of age? And then the second question is religion. Because most of the, I would say, Trump supporters are conservative Christians. Yep. How do you being Hindu uh, affect or have no effect on the Judeo-Christian perspective from the conservative side? So the age and the religion are two questions I want to ask you about. Which one do you want me to go first on? Let's, let's go with religion first and then with sure. the age. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that that's, that's in, in many ways the more fundamental one, which I think is a legitimate question for people who don't know me to ask. And so- what do I say? I'll, I'll speak the truth. I think that this country was indeed founded on Judeo-Christian principles, and we should not apologize for that fact. I'm actually vocal about it. I'm a big believer in history. I've studied our nation's history. I've studied the Bible. I went to Christian school for high school. This nation is absolutely founded on Judeo-Christian values. I share those values deeply in common. I am a Hindu. I was raised in a Hindu household. We raised our two sons in the same faith-based tradition but it's the same values that ground us. The belief that God put us here for a purpose, that there is a one true God, that we're united, we're equal. Brandon, not because some guy wrote it in a secular document. We're equal, as we say in the Christian tradition, because we're made in the image of God. The tradition I was raised in, we say we're equal because God resides in each of us. I believe it, the thing that gives me my freedom, even in a presidential campaign, in moments of stress, what do I remind myself of? It's not being done by us. It is being done through us. We were put here for a reason, for a higher purpose, that we have to make that sacrifice for that higher purpose. To me, that's one of the most powerful threads through the entire Bible. You have God asked Abraham to sacrifice his son, Isaac. He didn't make him follow through with that sacrifice. But then in the New Testament, God actually sacrificed his son for the people who needed that sacrifice in order to believe in God. That's exactly the tradition of sacrifice and duty. Hinduism is founded on that same tradition of following your duty. And I think America is founded on the concept of being a constitutional republic, not just a democracy, where citizens have duties to their country too, something we've forgotten. And so I live my life according to a standard. We brought our two sons into this world. The standard I want you to hold me to as your next president, if you all put me there, is that I want to be able to look my two sons in the eye just like everybody else hopefully can look their kids in the eye and say, I want you to grow up and be like him. Whoever that is in the White House, that's the standard I want you to hold me to. And you know what? I think that when it comes to advancing the interests of those who are Christians, those who are Jews, those who are Hindus, those who are people of faith in this country, religious liberty is under assault in our country. I am an unapologetic defender of religious liberty. I am unapologetically pro-life in this country. In some ways though, because I'm young, and this ties to the age question, but also because frankly, I wasn't raised in a Christian household. I can defend those values without somebody calling me a Christian nationalist. And I think that actually gives me more liberty and latitude to do it. And speaking of the age question, that also is what allows me to reach the next generation. You know, my wife and I, we're making family and faith and patriotism and hard work, we're making those concepts cool again. I don't know if you, want, if you want to take, if you saw some of that video footage from that party that we had after the Turning Point event that I spoke at over the weekend. I mean, it was moving to me to see thousands of young Americans. I mean, they were mobbing us. It feels like we're at a concert. You know, I'm, you know, I'm a rock star, but I'm not talking about it because of sex, drugs, and alcohol. I'm talking about faith, family, and what it means to be a citizen of this country. Those are cool concepts, right? That's what we have to pass on to the next generation because those are inherently concepts that young people are starved for and hungry for. And as a young person, I think I am best positioned of anybody in this race in either party to make young Americans proud to be citizens of this country again. I am 37. It's a fair question to ask. Yes, what have I accomplished? Well, I hope my best accomplishments and my best contributions to this country are still ahead of me. But I haven't been sitting around for the last couple of decades either. I've built multi-billion dollar businesses, 
employ thousands of people, develop medicines, five of which are FDA approved products today. In the last couple of years, I've written three books. They're my own books, not somebody else's. One of them uh, was one of the top New York Times bestsellers of the last several years, exposing the woke industrial complex in America. I did it all while following my faith, getting married to my lovely wife, Apoorva. She's lived her American dream. She's a successful throat surgeon at Ohio State. <laughs> you wouldn't know it if you saw her on the campaign trail with our two sons. That's the American dream to me. It's not just about green pieces of paper. It's about living our conviction and our purpose as citizens. And I think that helps set an example of what's possible. Do I have all the experiences that Trump has had in being the US president? No, of course I don't have those experiences. But I do have fresh legs. I have energy. I'm not yet jaded and cynical. I truly believe and hope that just as my best days, I hope, are ahead of me as an individual, I truly believe that our best days as a country are still ahead of us too. And I think it might take a young person to see it that way, that we're not a nation in decline. I'm not an individual in decline. I think our nation is still in our ascent, in the early stages of our ascent, on our way to a mountaintop that's still yet ahead of us. Maybe I'm at base camp in my journey as, as an American. I hope that we're just as base camp in our journey as Americans, as a nation. And you know what? It's going to be up to the people of this country to decide. I'm, it's my job to tell you who I am, what I stand for, and what I believe. It's up to the voters of this country to decide if that's what they want. But I promise you I'll do my part in this campaign. The voters will do theirs. And if they put me in that office, I think when I leave office in January 2033, we will absolutely have gotten done the few things that I'll tell you we'll get done. Shut down the administrative state, declare independence from China, grow the economy, make the next generation proud of being American. That much I'm confident I can do, even though I'm just 37. And if the people that. agree with me, I'll be their next president.